Hello and welcome to Nerdy Unreal Dev. And today we're going to be talking about the basics of the geometry uh, brush and the geometry mode uh, within Unreal Engine 5. This is something I've brought up before, but I keep forgetting I haven't actually made a video on. Uh, so, as you can see, we're in the Digital Museum. Link in the description below, if anyone's curious. And you'll notice a lot of this is actually box brushes. And that is because this is a great level design tool. Um, though, for actual, you actually need to turn these into static meshes to improve performance because geometry brushes uh, take up a lot of performance, essentially. I won't go into the nitty gritty. Uh, but it's great for laying out levels, getting an idea of what kind of textures you want to be using, and so on and so forth. I also have a little example of something I will bring up very shortly. So let's get started. To use the geometry brushes, you go over to this tab in Place Actors. You should note I'm in Activate Select Editing Mode. And you pick one of these, you'll notice that there's uh, even pre-made stairs. And each of these uh, have little settings. So if I grabbed like one of the stairs, you'll notice you'll have step length, number of steps, real, real quick, real easy uh, to use. Uh, box, you know, the shape. X, Y, and Z. You can just do, uh, edit that from there. Uh, hollow, test, all sorts of things. So let's just 200. Oh, no, that's not what I want. 100 by 400. Yeah. And you'll also notice an interesting property. Oops. What the? All right, well, for one thing, uh, okay, that's what was going on there. I accidentally hit Alt Move, which is how you duplicate objects in Unreal, sometimes n unintentionally. Anyways, I'm rambling. One of the settings you might have noticed uh, before is additive. You can also make it subtractive. Now, what does that mean? Well, what it means is you can bring in another mesh and let's just make this smaller. You can also edit it this way if it's easier. And then we're gonna make this mesh subtractive. And now you can see that there's a hole in this mesh. So you can use this to do uh, some interesting kinds of modeling. Um, Unreal does the making it engine friendly on its own, which is really cool. And so you can do that. Additionally, if you go into brush editing mode, you can then edit uh, by face. So just pull this exact face here, a little much. Pull this exact face this way. Maybe you wanna to go to this brush and pull that up for whatever reason. You can do all sorts of things. Um, you can also extrude, it'll give you this uh, little warning. So to show you how that works, one thing, that's actually how I created this arch, which is different from how I created this one. So to extrude, you would select the face, get the warning, and then just drag up. Drag up, I said. And using this, you can do all sorts of things. You do need to keep in mind the way that the extrude works. 
So if you plan on extruding another face downwards, you need to make sure that there is a rectangle to extrude downwards, etc. Now, once you have like your level set up, uh, whatever little modeling, uh, one of two things can happen in order to improve performance. The first thing is, since this is intended to be a level design tool, all of the geometry brushes would get uh, replaced with static meshes that the 3D artist on the team made. Alternatively, what might happen is they might get turned static. So to do that in it, all you would need to do is go to details. This isn't up to the side. Usually you would scroll down. Uh, and here we have the surface properties. Something I nearly missed. Uh, the surface um, properties allow you to texture in interesting ways. So you can actually put the textures by face. And this will stay with the model as you static mesh it. You want to make sure you have the face selected. Um, alternatively, you can just do this in this mode, and it's actually easier to do it in this mode. So you can have a variety of materials. And what you can also do is, like, see how this one's the wrong way? Can select that face and rotate 90 degrees or 45 degrees. So you can also scale. Uh, so maybe, you know, you want it bigger, U and V, hit apply. Uh, you can also flip the texture. Uh, UIV, U, I believe, is like uh, right or left. I can't remember which is vertical or which is horizontal, but you can play with it. Uh, you also have pan, so you can move things over, so maybe things tile neater, or you want it just the right way. So these are things you can do. Uh, there's also a bit of light map resolution. I wouldn't worry too much about it unless you're the lighting artist. And once you have all that perfect, you scroll down to the brush settings and hit create static mesh. Make sure it's in the right folder. And now this is a static mesh instead of a geometry. And the it's actually UV'd properly. So the other arch I was just looking at, you can take a look, UV channel one, and now you can see how all the UVs are laid out. Uh, you can see there's no N-gons going on. N-gons, for those of you who don't know, are polygons with five or more sides. And, but what about a model where it's two meshes? Well, you go into that out world outliner, you make sure you select both of them. Um, I believe for this it's important to like when you're ma using the static the subtractive meshes you do want to make sure there's an additive there first you can't move an additive mesh into a subtractive mesh you have to move a subtractive mesh into an additive I'm not sure if that's important while uh, selecting but it's probably good practice to do that anyways so you select those and then over in brush settings, you hit create static mesh. Again, make sure it's there, create static mesh, and then it's one static mesh with no end gons. <laughs> so that is the important basics of geometry brushes. I hope that helps. Uh, your level designing and again before you have that final product out there make sure they're static meshes don't just publish it uh, with all the geometry brushes like I did bad idea <laughs> anyways uh, check out the affiliate links below as well as the digital museum and I hope 
Y'all have a good one.